Yo, yo, welcome to lesson 25. Today, we're going to talk about responsive web design and also frameworks. Nowadays, almost every device can load a website. For example, we can go on websites on our phone, our TVs, laptops, and etc. Each device has a different screen size, and as we build our websites, we need to be mindful of the different screen sizes. For example, what looks great on a big screen may not look as great on a smaller one. Cool, let's take a look at this example from W3 Schools. On a wide screen, this page looks great. And as we resize the page, I want you to pay attention to what happens to the elements. So let's start. And if you notice here, the elements basically went to the center of the page below the content here. So let's keep resizing the page. And here, as you notice, these rows became full length and the city section basically went below it. So basically what's happening here is the page is adapting to different screen sizes. As the screen sizes shrink, the elements are moving around and as you can see, the text is also wrapping as the screen shrinks. So let's take a look at their code right here. It looks pretty complicated. This is actually a lot of code to handle resizing. But don't let this scare you. We are living in 2022. And there are wonderful things called CSS frameworks that can make our lives 10 times easier. So let's go back to our previous website. And let's try resizing the page. So I'm going to drag it left. And as you can see, nothing is happening. The text is even wrapping. And basically, the content is getting cut off. Imagine viewing this website on your phone. You'd probably leave this page as soon as possible because it looks terrible. But no worries, today we're gonna learn how to build responsive websites to make our website look great on any device size. So when I first started making websites, I struggled a lot with CSS and it took me forever to get things to look right. So if you remember from the previous lesson, I mentioned that there are external CSS. For example, we use this link tag to link to the style.css file. And we can also use this link tag to import CSS built by other people into our website. Some great CSS frameworks that I like are Bootstrap, Materialize, and also Tailwind CSS. So these frameworks are amazing and they make building websites so much easier. So before we do anything, I just want to make a quick note that when you work at a company, in most cases, they would have something called a design system, which contains readily created assets that can be used across the board. The goal of this is to ensure consistent design and also help speed up development time. So instead of us rewriting CSS classes and etc., we should use things created for us. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn CSS, but I'm saying that we can probably get away without being experts at it. Of course, you should also practice CSS on the side and you should also understand how it works. Cool, now let me show you how to use a framework. So for this video, we're gonna learn how to use Bootstrap. So first go to the Docs tab and under the CSS heading, we can just copy this code. And now let's go back to Replit and let's drop this under the link tag. So paste. So notice here, the href is referencing a website. And the first link here is a CDN. And basically, CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And it's just basically servers all over the world that speed up the delivery of web content, bringing it closer to where users are. So you can kind of think of this as playing an online game. For example, there are different servers, one for NA, one for Europe, one for Asia. So if you live in North America, you probably want to connect to the NA server. So similarly here, the files for Bootstrap are distributed on different servers across the world and we're getting it from the closest one so that way it loads super fast. And also CDNs are known to cache content, which means that they store a local copy of it so that way it doesn't have to download the files all the time and it makes delivery of content more quickly. Cool, let's go back to Bootstrap. Let's go to the layout header and click container. So basically containers are a fundamental building block on Bootstrap. Uh, they're mostly used to contain content and it makes the content responsive to different screen sizes. So if you scroll down the page, you're going to see examples of how to use it. So since we imported Bootstrap into our project, we can use the CSS provided by Bootstrap. So in this case, we can use the container class to add responsiveness to our website. So let's copy this line and go back to Replit. So all we have to do is wrap our content inside this div. So let's add it here. And now let's hit tab on everything else. And now let's close the div. And now let's click run. Cool, and here as you can see, our page looks a bit different. It looks like by adding the container, we kind of lost the green background on our body. But anyways, let's try resizing our page now. Look at that, our page is actually moving as we resize. So basically now our page is responsive and we didn't even have to touch any CSS and we didn't have to write any complicated code. So let's inspect the code. Right click and hit inspect. Cool, and if we look at the styles, you're gonna see bootstrap.min.css, which means that this came from Bootstrap. And if you look here, you're going to see at media min width 576px, which looks like what we saw in the example from W3 schools. And basically, we didn't even have to write this. Bootstrap wrote it for us, and now we get it for free, which is super awesome. Cool. So make sure to check out Bootstrap. There's a lot of cool components that we can add to our website. For example, you can go to the components tab, 
And inside here, there's a lot of different stuff you can add to your website. For example, let's check out the nav bar. So if you scroll down, you're going to see this example of a nav bar. Literally, you can just copy the code and go back to Replit and paste it inside the container. And now let's click run. And just like that, we got this cool looking nav bar that works right out of the box. And of course, we can tweak it a bit to make it work for our website, but you get the point. We get all of this for free. So feel free to play around with these frameworks and try to update your websites. Hopefully, this will save you a lot of time. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you guys want a video of me building a website from scratch, let me know in the comments below. And based on the interest, I'll see whether I should make a video on that. Anyways, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video.